What's up guys and girls, Ruckus here, back from my week-long holiday over east. A solid week spent drone flying, board gaming, and Lego building with the family. Good times for this man-child, good times. Today, I've got a sensual three-way of games from you guys. These are all subscriber replays, and kicking it off in the very sexy Leopard 1 is Jimmy13. Now, this replay is bound to be somewhat controversial due to Jimmy's overuse of the promo rounds in this game. <laughs> I have refused to show replays in the past, sending my players who have used far too much um, in a lot of situations like firing against low tier opponents where uh, the normal rounds would have easily done the job. There is an example there, heat round through the side of that T62, completely unnecessary. APC out here through the Leopard 1 on the enemy team, that was a better choice. And here again, you know, APCR through the front upper plate of the T-54. 268 millimeters of penetration we're talking here with APCR. Would have done the job, I think. Jimmy's saving grace is through the rest of the game, the shots he takes, almost the rest of this game, the shots he takes are against targets where the APCR would not have done the job. Unfortunately for Jimmy, he doesn't do one point of heat round damage in this game that could not have been done <laughs> with APCR. Uh, all, his, all his heat round shots either Failed to penetrate or failed to hit the target at all. If you're in a machine with as good a mobility as the Leopard 1 and you are deciding to sit in a position where you're firing against the front of T95s, hold down Russian mediums, um, you just, you're not playing it right basically. <laughs> you should never really need to use the heat rounds in this gun unless you're in a complete bind or it's the desperate uh, dying seconds of a match and you're trying to eke out some more damage, really. Uh, let's not be too harsh here on Jimmy though. He's got the right idea now and he's heading wide. He's going to try and use the excellent mobility of the Leopard 1 to get in behind the Reds, get some softer targets, get the damage mounting up without spending all those credits. He's already burnt through just about half of his heat rounds supplies, but he's got a lot of APCR. Unfortunately, Without him there to back up his team and lend some weight to their defense of that position, his allies start falling pretty quickly. Down three in about 30 seconds as he slips in here to find this lone pattern. Very good target. Looking the other way. Good hit. He hits the adrenaline. Another hit. This poor old pattern. He's not going to do any damage in return. <laughs> He's going to have a horrible time here. Third hit, miracle bounce there off the, well it was very well angled, upper plate. Team is down to just Jimmy now and an M103 who has not moved since the 40 second mark of the game. That was a good kill though. Taking out the entirety of that M46 without losing any hit points. And he's back on the heat rounds again. Unnecessary for the side of the Death Star, yes, but this is the situation I was talking about before where it's just you versus half the team, or in this case more than half the enemy team, and well, you don't really expect to win, so to hell with it, you can do as much damage as possible. Where are the reds going to come from? T95 moving to his left, left, right, uh, and no doubt the meds, there we go, the Russian meds pushing through the cap. T-54 down to one shot. T-62. Nice shot into the rear of his machine. Now he's got two tanks there on a one shot. If this was me, I would have rushed one of them. Uh, probably try and take out one gun before the Death Star and the T-95 rock up. Perhaps he's worried that the Death Star is sitting there on the other side of the creek, near the mosque. Um, which is fair enough. If he does expose himself, he'd be a clear shot. So he's playing cautiously, back on the heat rounds, shooting at Russian medium turrets is a waste of money. <laughs> but uh, it's a tough situation, you can't really blame him. Cap's climbing through 40. Where are those tank destroyers? Whoop, target right, Death Star. Now he's in a bind. It's one of those games where it had the Reds have committed as one, it would have turned out very differently, but they're all holding off, and he's actually not spotted by any of them now. 
I would have expected the T62 to try his luck from behind. I have no idea what this shot was supposed to be. <laughs> Hit ground. <laughs> Complete miss on the front right hand drive wheel. Death Star! Oh, heat round. Lucky it did not get absorbed by the tracks. And there is the T95 in the cap. Somehow bounces that guy's shot off the turret. Cap 96%. Had to pause there. This is another problem with the heat rounds. Had to pause there. Took unnecessary damage because he paused to swap rounds so this heat round didn't get blocked by the wall. But. Both the meds down, just a T95 on cap, and now he's got plenty of time to strategize. How is he going to play this? The right move is, of course, break contact, come in from an unexpected location, and get him behind. Look out! Oh, <laughs> shot there, dives into the dunes. He's been spotted, obviously. He needs to break contact again. He's diving down to the creek, and plenty of time still. T95, horrible situation for that guy. There's not much he can do. Needs to back his ass into a wall if possible uh, and avoid the inevitable rush that's going to occur here. Spotted again. T95, no doubt, circling in this direction. Make him think you're going to come in from this direction, dive back into the creek bed, and then rush in around. And that's exactly what Jimmy's going to do here. Well played. 83 4 on the cap. Cruising in now. T95 might have spotted him there, but he's in easily. Unnecessary heat round once again into the side of this guy, but now he's in behind. He swaps back to APCR, and that is game done. Oh, poor T95. Auto fire extinguisher as well. <laughs> Unlucky, but well played to Jimmy there. Good result. You can't really argue with that. 5,500 damage. The credit bill definitely would have been more expensive had he not have been running a premium account. 23,000 credits uh, lost there. I would have expected way more with the amount of premium consumables used there, but well played, Jimmy. And we move on to the next game. We move from a nice, fluid mobile game to a bit of a camp fest at the start of this one. Cleve Helm is back in the Jaeger Panzer IV, aka the Flat Panzer. No one's favourite vehicle, he says, but I didn't mind it. It's a low-profile little TD with very mediocre armour, only 80 mils at the front. I thought it was a pretty good sloping on the top. And a punchy high DPM 88 mil gun. You can definitely catch people out with the DPM on this gun. It's very rapid firing, it's got pretty decent accuracy, and the penetration is okay as well. It'll get the job done, as we're going to see here. Rudy first target up as his team moves forward. This is a good place to be in the back corner if you're in this machine and you've got a team that isn't afraid of cresting the central ridge there. If you start a game and none of your team moves this way forward, you might as well move with them to the rail side of the, uh, the map because without spotters, this position is next to useless. And that goes the same, or just about the same for uh, that high ridge uh, to Cleve Helm's right. I do like to sit up there if I'm in a TD, let's say uh, SU-100 or the JP-2. I can do a lot of damage from up in those high spots, which may not be here in the next update, if it's not already here now. Uh, Dead Rail is getting an update, new positions, new uh, terrain features, removal of the bulldozer is apparently big news. <laughs> And whilst I haven't seen all the details, I do know that some of the uh, sniping positions are gone. So that stupid one in the back corner, opposite where Cleve Helm is now. And that's going, I think. So bracing myself for the influx of, oh my god, they're flattening all the maps. There's nowhere for mediums and uh, tank destroyers and whatever. Heavy tanks to sit in camp. <laughs> it's coming. So Cleve Helm has fired a few shots. He's got two kills. He... Uh, Picked a good one off on that Easy 8, or whatever it was, that US medium with the HE rounds just before. Not a great deal of splash damage with an 88mm gun, but enough to take out the 30 odd hit points in that Easy 8. Speculative shot against the IS in last position, but he is away. 
And team is losing their early lead. And they're up by one still. As he fires a few APCR rounds now at the front of this tier 7 SU-101. He is charging forward, keen to get in the thick of it. And takes out the Easy 8 on the Cleve Helms team. So, four apiece, and what's he got left as backup? Well, not the E2. <laughs> IS just removed him. Just a VK-3001D. So he needs to get in this battle now before uh, all the rest of the distractions for this red team are gone. Hits the adrenaline, and ah, don't you hate that? <laughs> Punch the adrenaline only to get one shot off <laughs> as your targets disappear. He's not sitting back though, he's going to get stuck in. Uh, that VK, well I was going to say he wasn't going to last long, but um, he's gone. Issue 101 though, down to one shot. Oh, unlucky bounce APC after the epiglacis. IS is on the reload. Take advantage. Pull away. Uh, that hurt, but rapid reload on this 88. The IS is definitely doomed. Nice work. One versus one now. Where is the enemy E2? Probably feeling pretty exposed now driving around in the open, but not much else he can do. Is to rush around and spot this guy and uh, be able to dive into cover when he does turn up. Plenty of time left on the clock. There it is. Full health too. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Pivots around. Trying to get a few quick shots off before he gets into range. One there. Nice hit. Still on APCR. Tracking shot. No, unlucky. Did do damage though. And that was also lucky. Detract. Quick on the uh, repairs. How did that not go through? One APCR remaining. Not looking good. Jink, jink. Not enough. <laughs> Hits him. Adrenaline. Will it be enough? They're both down in one shot. Yes. <laughs> Super rapid reload with adrenaline on this thing. Very well played there at the finish. And that is a decent metal haul. Mastery and... I oh, can't even not get to bother reading all those. A heap of medals. Kolobanos 2. 3.4k damage, 5 kills, 1100 base XP. And a loss again on the credits with those adrenalines and a PCR use. But a good game, you would agree. I'm sure he wasn't disappointed with that one. The third and final game, Maddox is back been away for a while as all these replays were saved in some kind of crazy file type that my editing software refused to open but uh, he's changed back and he is back in business the mod king sporting a few new ones in this replay in the tier 9 British heavy tank the conqueror with uh, that excellent uh, L1A1 gun this game plays out pretty much the same damage wise almost identical actually as the leopard game by Jimmy 13 but he makes 20,000 credits profit instead of losing 20,000. Need some good ammo selection here. Yes, some softer targets from the front, but uh, just goes to show how much difference firing AP will make to your final uh, profitability outcome. Now the mods he's got in this one, uh, there's a few sound mods. He's got new reload sounds by the sounds of it. Obviously the PC gun sounds. And by the sounds of it, I think that when auto aim comes on, that's also a PC modded across the sound side of the Jaegeru there. Nice hit. And very obviously, the reticule is a new one. I haven't seen this one before. I'm in two minds about it. Quite like the setup there of the range finder and the reload timer. It looks good. But um, this big no target detected and target lock thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a fan of look out. Surprise T62A. Uh, does he stay and run a delaying action or throw his weight in with the team's attack? He's going over the bridge. Now that no target detected target lock thing, that doesn't make sense to me. If you were target locked, it'd only be if you were auto aiming to me. Not if you just happen to have your cursor over the target. That would be target uh, not obstructed, I think. Not target locked. Anyway. <laughs> Each to their own. 
Bad luck there, Patton. Gorilla gets him. He swaps now to the HE rounds, which are, of course, Hesh rounds in this thing with a good amount of penetration. That shot auto-aimed. Very unlucky not to go through the Gorilla. Ouch, that hurt. Um, still running the Hesh rounds here. Average damage of about 500 odd off memory. No auto aim through the side of the turret. That was a good hit. Well, through the side of the gun shield. And this gorilla is gone. He just fired a shot and missed on the was that T62A. And now they've got this poor Jaegeru pinned in a corner. The team is doing pretty good. This is going to be a whitewash by the looks of it. Looking for a shot. No gun depression. Moves forward. APCR through the lower plate. And with that guy distracted, he's going to run wide. Hopefully the T62s will dump their shots. And they have just then. Which means nice easy shot here through the side of the superstructure. On the move. Stylish. E50 next. And we're going to see some good ammo selection here. Through the side. The flat side of this German vehicle. Hesh. Bang, with the engine fire. That is going to add the damage up. Pushing the attack. Lower plate, AP. Nicely done. And T62 dives. <laughs> Unlucky not to squash the T57. Max there with the final kill. A very nice, stylish, and aggressive game. Coming away with uh, the mastery badge, top gun, and the high caliber. And that is a wrap for today's episode, guys. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll catch you soon on the next one. Peace.